Joe Elliott, with recently becoming a professional men's coach, what is your stance of helping people while still running a business? Some people have tried to shame me for charging for healing and wanted to come to the men, uh, wanted to come to the man who's been coaching and healing men for 20 years professionally to see how you felt about it. Oh, so you're talking about me. So in essence, you're asking me, what do I feel about charging money for coaching men? Obviously, I don't feel bad about it. And I'll tell you how you can frame it in your mind that makes it such that it is the best thing for you and for your clients. I love the fact that you're becoming a professional men's coach. It's something that's new, right? Like guys like us didn't exist before for a myriad of different reasons. But all of a sudden, men are waking up and they're realizing there's more to life and that there are some guys that are privy to it and I can get near them, I can get around them, and I can receive what I didn't receive from my father, my grandfather, my uncles, because we live in a world that is... Uh, lacking in father energy. This is all a byproduct of the breakdown of the family. The fact that we need men coaches. The fact that I even exist for men to speak to means, well, where were our dads? Where are our fathers? Where were the, where were the red pill granddads and uncles telling us the things that we needed to know about women, right? Like, because mommy is not going to tell you the nature about women. women. Women don't even know their own nature for the most part. We needed men to say, okay, young man, now that you're becoming a man, Come over here, let me explain to you how what your role is and how to behave and how to think and your big the big vision for you in your life and what you mean to the society, so on and so forth. That doesn't exist anymore. So we're kind of filling a we're filling a hole that was there. Now, those that time is long gone. It's long gone. And I believe that we can make a comeback to that time if we repair the family. This is this is my ultimate vision for the work that I do, is to make families great again, right? Because that's how men produce strong men is by being a good father, right? We need our fathers back. We need father energy. We need patriarchy back. But like I said, it's a time long gone. We're here today. And what's being resurrected in a way is a form of initiation, right? And why do I say that? I say that because initiation is what? Initiation is a, is a, is a gateway. It's a passageway between an old life and a new life. And you as a men's coach, and even me and all of us here in the King Transformation program, we're, and that's why it's called King Transformation, we're going from an, one way of life, one way of thinking, one paradigm to, wow, slowly opening up, picking up our eyes, seeing things differently, right? And then into a brand new life. And that's my goal for you guys here in this program. It's thus an initiation. It's an initiation into a new way of life. Every initiation, cross-culturally, even with our ancestors, right? What we do here today, Mr. Eliade would call pseudo-initiation, right? Because it's, it's, it's done in a, in, a, in a fake world. We live in a fake world, right? Because uh, for a myriad of different reasons I don't want to get into. But we're resurrecting something that's old. And in, in all instances, be it a thousand years ago or here today, initiation always requires certain things. There are elements to initiation that are always present, one of which is sacrifice. There's no initiation without a sacrifice. Of course, you're sacrificing your old self, you're sacrificing your old attachments, you're sacrificing your blood in many instances, right? You're asking for some money. Imagine we had to sacrifice blood. In fact, my brother did a Native American initiation when he was in college, and he, he literally spilled blood. He, they pierced his skin, and he had to pull himself away from it in blood. He still has the scars. He has two scars here and two scars on his back where he was pierced and then popped through in order to shed that blood as a, as a, as a sacrifice in initiation. All initiation for all men requires sacrifice, whether we're conscious of it or not. You're asking men to be conscious of their sacrifice in coming into the, 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 the eldership, the mentorship, the coaching that you're providing. You got to have skin in the game is essentially what I'm saying. And your price for, for their initiation, your, your, your request, right? Your, your request of sacrifice from them comes in the form of not blood, right? Because if you make guys blood bleed today, right? Or like... If you read uh, Iron John, he talks about the little boys that were uh, initiated into a particular tribe that 
uh, told a, a, a myth about a man named Darwala. He was a wild man who lived in the trees. And one of the things that they had sacrificed to Darwala was a tooth. And so every man in that tribe had a missing tooth, <laughs> right? And that happened when the boy was becoming a man and they told the story of Darwala and how Darwala lost his tooth because of, you know, however the myth goes. And the little boy is sitting there and, and the grown men punch him in his mouth, <laughs> right? I'm not telling you to do this shit. But a punch in the mouth and losing your tooth is analogous, but maybe a little bit worse than I'm charging a hundred dollars. I'm charging five hundred dollars. I'm charging a thousand dollars. That is because, as much as those people valued their teeth, is how people value their money today. The 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 sacrifice has to be in what you value. Giving up mommy attachment. I value mommy. I value her protection. I value her snuggles and comfort and pleasure. Right. I value alcohol, I value smoking weed, I value video games, they, they're so good. Chop, chop, there's gotta be a chop off. There has, every initiation has, comes with a chop, right? Parting ways with your money is a chop. Here's an important thing to understand. Value begets value. So, especially in this day where all value, all va I don't say all value, but react, or react, how do you call it? Transactional value, transactional value in our world comes in the form of a monetary note, right? That's the value. If no value is given, no value is received. This is from Dan Kennedy, right? So we're talking marketing now. Dan Kennedy says, don't give things away for free. Nothing. He says, give nothing away from free, for free. Even if you want to give someone something innocuous, right? Say a free report, right? Oh, it's because we're doing online stuff, right? So you want to give them the answer to a problem that they have, right? Well, you still ask for an email address, right? So that you can follow up. There's always, you, there always has to be something given for something to be received. If I don't pay for your services, I'm going, to, I'm going to not see the value in it. There's no skin in the game for it for me, so I can just pick up and go. Or I can listen to what you're saying and leave and take no action. Here's an interesting thing Dan Kennedy says also. He, he did this one workshop. It was a $10,000 workshop. Right? Austin says, those who pay, pay attention. You're right. And this is how, what Dan Kennedy says. <laughs> it's funny. I'm listening to this. I, sp I paid $6,000 for a set of... CDs from Dan Kennedy, right? And he charged, I think, like ten or fifteen thousand dollars for this live event, right? So I'm listening. I paid ten six thousand dollars, probably about half. He probably charged twelve, six thousand dollars to buy these CDs just so I could listen to it. So it was like I was at the event where he was teaching these marketing these these, these truths. You know, market good marketers are philosophers and psychologists. And so he says to the people in the audience, uh, he says. Well, you know, everybody here paid $12,000 to be here. And because you paid $12,000 to be here, it's going to be a great event, whether I say anything or not. He was kind of joking, saying that the fact that you spent the money, it's already going to be a good event for you because you've put something in. So he was joking, saying, look, you paid $12,000. I could pack up and walk out and you guys already got what you, what you signed up for, right? It's the value put, and, the, and of course he didn't do that, but he was making a joke. He's trying to kind of like uh, paint a picture for them to let them, to remind them that the invested value is concurrent with the received value. You want somebody to value something that you're giving to them, charge them more, right? These guys who are complaining that, and trying to shame you, it's because they don't want to put any skin in the game. Right? They want easy come. But you know what they say about easy come? Easy go. So these are worthless men. Not only monetarily are they worthless because they're, they're, they're not willing to contribute to your livelihood, right? For you to do this is a sacrifice. To be a coach is to be a sacrifice, right? I sacrifice my afternoon. I sacrifice my entire Thursday to be here with you guys. Most Thursdays, I'm spending, you know, six, seven, eight hours here with you guys. I sacrifice. They're not respecting your sacrifice, by not putting any skin in the game, right? So it's only fair, but it's more than just fair. 
it's beneficial, particularly to the person that's sacrifice, that's paying, that's putting skin in the game. And whether it be money or whether it be blood, a tooth, whether it be cattle, whether it be whatever it is, you got to give something up to get something. Value put in equals value put out. That all being said, right, I just want to establish that fact that it's good and it's, it's right for you to charge. There's nothing that says you can't ask someone to put value in in a different way. One of the greatest things that I used to do when I did uh, grounding camps and some of my other, every time I did a clinic or a workshop, I always offered, not always, but most of the time offered uh, scholarship opportunities. We've had so many scholarship opportunities over the years in a lot of my programs. And what is a scholarship? A scholarship means, okay, I get it. There's some people that legitimately do not have the money, but really need what I'm offering. So still, there's got to be skin in the game. So a lot of these guys that used to come to my events that I gave scholarships to, I would ask them to do a number of things. Number one, write me an essay or make me a video about why you deserve this scholarship. That's skin in the game from that person. And by them doing that, they're increasing the value. You're helping them increase the value of the scholarship because now they have to think, well, why do I, why do I want to do this? Right? You got to ask them that too. Why do I want to do this? And what is it worth to me in my time and energy to write this? And why am I a worthy choice for this scholarship? You got, they got to have hoops. They got to have skin in the game. Write that essay. Make that video. Also, another thing I would do with these guys who I would offer a scholarship is I'd say, hey, by the way, I may lean on you for some uh, volunteer work, some help. You've seen guys at my grounding camp. And these are guys that they don't pay to be there, but they're working, right? When I need help with something, when I need somebody to run me an errand, when I need, like, you know, whatever it is, these guys are my right-hand men, and they're helping me out. They don't pay to be there, but they're skin in the game. Right? There's skin in the game. And then finally, just to make the best use of anybody that you gift a scholarship into your programs for, you ask for a testimonial. And these are going to be your best testimonial, guys, because they are most appreciative. You know, they say, look, Austin, like, I really legitimately didn't have the money to be here. I had to scrap together just whatever pennies I had to get on the airplane. I, there's no way I could have paid your, 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 your ticket price. But thank you for opening an opportunity for me to sacrifice some time, some of my energy, some of my uh, whatever it is that you ask of them. And I benefit greatly from being here. They're going to be very happy to offer you testimonials, bro. So I see you're kind of following up with a question. Let me see. How would you build value in yourself or qualify yourself to have people believe a sacrifice of money is worth it? Just like I said. What you want to do is get as many testimonials as possible. People are skeptical. People are skeptical. And I understand why people are skeptical. But if you have 20 videos from guys that have been there and they're all saying, this was great. This was awesome. I'm happy I did it. At first, I was a little leery about the investment. But once I got there, I realized that it was worth 10 times what I paid. You want people to say stuff like that. And the way you do that is by creating an incredible experience for them, helping them have breakthroughs, and then asking them for testimonials. Then you don't have to prove anything. You don't have to prove anything. Uh, oh, who, who was his name? I just did an interview with him. Um, kid on YouTube. I'm sorry, I'm drawing a blank right now. I'm going to, I'm going to find him. Uh, who did I just do an interview with? He does a really good job. Uh, he calls himself head man. Casey. Yeah. What's it? What's it, What's Casey's uh, first and last name? I'm embarrassed. <laughs> Xander. Thank you, Patrick. Casey Xander. I'm going to roll right now. So my brain is like, I'm not there. <laughs> um, Casey Xander is a great example of this. Casey does a great job. First of all, Casey teaches men, adult men, grown men, married men, mostly successful businessmen, 
how to win back their wives because as they built their businesses, their wives lost interest in them because these guys were working too much, maybe ignoring their wives and their wives lost attraction to them. And now they're like, well, I have a big you know, multi-million dollar business and my wife doesn't respect me when I come home, right? And they're like, what the fuck do I do? Well, Casey is a kid. He's like in his early 20s. He's never been married. Why do men continually pay him to figure out how to win back their wives? Results, results, results. You, if you follow Casey and you sub subscribe to his emails or you go into his Facebook group, his entire marketing is testimonials. If you watch testimonial after testimonial after testimonial after testimonial, you have to say to yourself, wow, it's working for all these guys. There must be something to it. Even though Casey's a younger guy, he doesn't have, he hasn't been married. He seems to know what he's talking about. That's another thing about him. He provides a lot of value in his videos, he tons of value, but he also has a, always has a call to action. And if you take his call to action, he's going to say, hey, by the way, look at all these guys who have gotten great results with me. That's how you, that's how you get the people to perceive the value, right? That's what you're asking me. How do I build value in yourself and qualify yourself? You do that by getting results. That's how people will believe in you. What are the results, right? If you're, if you're offering something that provides results, you could be offering something that provides entertainment. Because with Grounding Camp, there was an entertainment factor. People will watch the videos and be like, oh man, that looks dope. I wanna do it, I wanna do it. They get excited because they see what we're doing. So a part of the draw, at least for Grounding Camp when I was doing those events, was wow, I get to go do that. That looks like fun, right? There's a lot of like men uh, events that are popping up all over the country right now. And like you watch their videos. I'm thinking of like Bedros Koulian. He does that now. And that guy, Garrett White. Uh, there's a couple of others too. This guy named Raul. You watch their videos of their events and you're, you know, a guy, a manly man. And you're wanting to reconnect with, you know, other masculine men and be in, a, in, a, in an environment with, you know, that, that type of energy. You watch the videos and you're like, oh, wow. Regardless of the results, that looks like something that I want to engage in. So you, got, you can't forget that also. I'm just telling you that as you know, someone who's putting on events, if that's what you're doing. I know you, you sent me some pictures today about what you've been doing. Make, those, make, make the events something that people are going to crave, that they want. They want to be there and capture their breakthroughs, capture the results. And uh, you can't lose, dude. So I hope that helps. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you wanna join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.